first uh, debate rolls around in October. Do you anticipate more candidates participating, uh, specifically one Mr. Vice President Joe Biden? Oh, you know, I, I really don't know. Um, we're ready as a party to you know, interact and have been interacting with both potential candidates as well as declared uh, presidential candidates. The vice president has not ruled out running for president of the United States. And of course, as I've said uh, numerous times, um, there's always room for the sitting vice president if he chooses to run. Um, in fact, there's room for anyone. This is America. So <laughs> there's room for anyone who chooses to run. And we, would, we are proud uh, to have anyone decide that they share the values of the Democratic Party and want to uh, run as our standard bearer. Greg Newman yes, from WKW ABC in Madison. Uh, I saw the DNC file yeah, release saying that, step up. Yeah, yeah. for anybody that Scott Walker contradicted himself by saying repeatedly he was not the, sub the subject of a criminal investigation. It's not come out of that he was, even though he was not ever indicted. Do you think that he owes an explanation on that? You know, there's lots of explaining that Scott Walker <laughs> has to do um, besides that inconsistency. Um, he has, I think, at least six or eight of his top aides that have been under investigation, in, indictment, um, and who have been actually charged with crimes. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I, I haven't looked at it recently, but um, the, the, I think it's six, yes. And uh, I mean, he's, it, it's not, it wasn't just a, a, an occasional anomaly, one-off accusation. I mean, these people were actually prosecuted. And they were prosecuted related to his previous campaigns. Um, there have been ethical uh, questions and criminal questions swirling around Scott Walker for a long time. So it's no wonder that uh, he has been trying to hide the fact that he was under investigation. I don't know. I I've been in office a really long time. I think that's, if I were under criminal investigation, that's not something that I'd forget or make a mistake about. You'd be pretty, I'd be deeply disturbed and would probably remember it and be able to get it right when asked a question. Yes? Yeah, John Spinelli, Ohio News Bureau. Since we're in Ohio and since Governor Kasich is now uh, going to be on stage with the other uh, participants tonight, uh, let's play a little round of fantasy football. <laughs> if uh, Fox News called you up and said, uh, what question would you like us to ask Governor Kasich, what would each one of you say? I'm going to allow my Ohio friends to step mm -hmm. up on sure, this. I'll let you handle You know, honestly, I pre appreciate that question. The there, there's a lot, I'm sure, but Tim, Tim's economic points. I'd ask him why he thinks Ohio has trailed the country for 32 straight months in our job growth, which we have. I have him, you know, there's a great uh, cartoon this morning on the front of the plane dealer of all the candidates, but then on the right side was a story about the economic st wage stagnation we've had for decades. I'd ask him why he thinks that's continued under his watch. But maybe the most pressing question, and I know, uh, I see Daryl Rowland here, I know folks have been asking him, is why he would not want an investigation into grade fixing in the for profit schools that we have in Ohio. Uh, it is a, it, it should be. Frankly, a scandal. This is what was just asked about with Scott Walker. Uh, we have this out of control for profit system in Ohio. <laughs> the biggest beneficiaries are huge Republican donors. And um, believe it or not, the husband of his campaign manager was the person who had to resign because he was the one caught changing scores. So I'd ask him a lot about that. I know those were three. I play a lot of fantasy, so I got a few extra <laughs> question answers in there. Tim? <laughs> Um, as a Cleveland Browns football fan, I hate to engage in any fantasy football <laughs> today, given our past. But um, two questions that I would ask: one is, with, with one in every eight job jobs in Ohio related somehow to the auto industry, why would you not be for the auto refinancing package that ended up saving the American auto industry and saving manufacturing? And the other question I would ask that I've, I've thought a lot about, um, his philosophy or his reason for giving away the $400 million to upgrade rail and to get us uh, eventually high-speed rail in Ohio was given back because he didn't want to take money from the federal government and be responsible for whatever came next. And then several months later, he expands the Medicaid program which is federal money. So I think as you'll find out, as Chairman Pepper just said, there's a lot of inconsistencies throughout, and I would like to know, you know why we don't have $400 million being invested creating jobs right now if obviously you now have a different philosophy. 
Congressman Captain. Thank you for asking the question. Um, on the issue of surface transportation, maybe some of you use the turnpike, I-8090, which since its establishment in the 1950s at the uh, leadership, with the leadership of President uh, Dwight Eisenhower, has functioned through tolls. There's not a penny of federal support that has ever gone to this turnpike corridor. Under Governor Kasich's administration, dollars are being diverted from the north here, people who have to pay tolls and being used for other purposes. It is almost impossible to ascertain, and believe me, we are trying to figure out where the state of Ohio is placing those dollars. I cannot tell you. And we shouldn't have any system where people here tax themselves. It's almost a double tax because federal dollars do not come to the I-8090 corridor. And then dollars are diverted from the I-8090 corridor elsewhere. So it's like a double tax on our people here, almost like a constriction of economic growth in the north. Where is he putting those dollars? Another question I would ask him, uh, I assume that he identifies as pro-life. If that is true, uh, I would ask the governor, why does Ohio rank nearly at the bottom in terms of infant mortality? I mean, the highest infant mortality in the country, among the top two or three states, if in fact he is a pro-life governor. Senator Turner? I'm, 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 I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll do the bonus points now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Ohio colleagues have covered just about everything, but you know, I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that this is the 50th year anniversary of the Voting Rights Act today. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, the governor decided to sign a bunch of bills that was passed by the Republican legislature. And I was a member of the legislature at that time, but the one that troubles me the most, if I had to pick one for now, is the taking away of Golden Week, where people in the state of Ohio had the opportunity to both register and vote at the same time. That is so important in terms of increasing access to the ballot box. Because most folks in this state and across this country, they may never ever run for office. But in the United States of America, in the representative democracy, you get to express your will through the ballot box. And so it is the greatest equalizer. So that troubles me greatly. That's why Nina Turner is one of our